Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to the No Life Tech and Gaming Podcast. How are y'all doing? We're doing the same thing we did last week. We're going to smush them together this week. Not too much news. Uh, we'll probably fly through this episode. But let's begin. What's up, homies? How y'all doing? Actually, before we begin, before I bring you guys in, make sure you head over to our website, nolife.digital, and then our Instagram and our Twitter at no Life Digital. That way you can stay updated on what we're doing. Make sure you're subscribing to the podcast so you can stay updated on new episodes. And all of the episodes, all of the articles, all of the reviews are on the website. It's this, the central hub, hub of No Life Digital. So what's up, dudes? Yep. Not much. Chilling. Yep. Working. You guys ready for the Rams versus the Pats? And the uh, Super Bowl. This is the, I'm, I, this is the worst Super Bowl in a long time. No. I know. I it's think really so. Not, I, it's just, it just, I. I think so. You've got, you've got a team that's in their ninth Super Bowl in the last eighteen, so they've been in fifty percent of the last Super Bowls in eighteen years. They've been in every single one. Might as well have been in every single Vers- one. Yeah, I mean, versus a team that their fan base in in LA literally does not care about. They literally don't exist. <laughs> they don't exist. I mean. So, that's that's fair from that viewpoint, but like, I don't know. I'm still okay with it just because this this was probably the first year in a couple where it's like, oh yeah, both of the con- like the conference games was like, no, that's actually four teams that I think deserves to be there. Yeah, I I they really were, wanted the Chiefs to win. I did not they, want to. Dude, see I wanted a rematch. They that were Rams Chiefs good. Game the best game all year by and hand. They down. were good games except for the riffing. Yeah, the ref was terrible. Especially that Saints Rams game. Yeah, that was a terrible call. That was bad. Was bad. Uh, someone brought up a good point that I kind of agree with. Should change overtime rules too in the playoffs. To what? I'm saying, I've been saying it for a while now. I, uh, I, to I, allow the other team to score a touchdown. Right. No. Like not not necessarily full college rules, but like change it just for the playoffs. Both teams have a chance at having an offensive push. Yeah, I think just, so. And it's just because. I mean, the NFL, it's offense based. Yeah. Now. Yeah. So, like, if it's just a coin flip and someone starts with the ball, they win. Especially if you're giving it to Tom Brady. Yeah. Yeah. Stupid. So, like, I, I do kind of agree with that. I, I, I mean, hockey, we do we do different overtime rules in playoffs. It's not difficult. Yeah. It's the hockey is what? It's just a quarter, right? You just play another quarter? No, you just play until someone wins. Oh, until yeah. someone scores? Yeah, which is why it's awesome, but it's all it's hell. Like there's literally been games that go is, twice as long than as a regular playoff, game. Is playoff hockey overtime still three on three or is it five v five? Uh I think it's five v five. Yeah, because like in regular yeah, season it's three v three, five yeah. minutes. Five minutes then shoot out, because you gotta have the games go quicker. But yeah. overtime it's just it's the old school what all overtime used to be of no, you just play until someone wins. And I, I find the argument, like, I like, I personally, I would put the college football rules in, like, for overtime. I like having the, essentially, red zone chances. Yeah. And I get I get the argument, oh, well, then it's, you know, it's red zone. How, how good is your red zone? But to true. me, red zone is the true, like, where you see your best defense and your best offense is in the red zone. Yeah, and it's just... Because it's... things get so compact. Yeah. It becomes, it less becomes of how coverages break down and who really wins your one-on-one matchups yeah i think it's it's partially that but it's also i mean i for, for me i think a good step is just no if in, in the playoffs both offenses get to touch the ball or even just play a quarter just have one quarter if it ties you go to another quarter it's the the whole one touchdown no, you win is so stupid. Yeah, let's do that. that's yeah. what i'm saying i mean ten, it, it, tennis it is, is kind of the same way too yeah. tennis you have to play to you to yeah. till you win and matches can go on for days you know, you got to go to sleep, come back, and play the next match. See, I can understand it for playoffs um, because I get during the regular season, it's hard to do that when you have multiple games. That could yeah, no, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want that in the regular season. But, yeah. like, the, the, it's totally feasible, in my opinion, to have playoff rules. And or even just the championship game and the Super Bowl. You know, yeah, don't, maybe not I, even just playoffs, just, like, those two games. Eh, I would still do the whole, thing. Playoffs, whole playoffs. Yeah, because, like, once you, once you start breaking it up that much, that's when – people get even more pissed especially during the playoffs there are no games that go on at the same time right yeah you know they're all nationally broadcasted games and that's probably that's mainly the reason why they do it that way so they can get that next time slot you know so it's not running over time because they have well, the to thing, pay for that time never, but they're never on the same channel so you're never gonna have like a cutaway scenario 
where Fox has to cut this into this game and go to the next one. No, but it's more for the show. Like it's more for just the time on the channel. Advertisers wanna, yeah, and stuff like that. They want to minimize what, that. There's okay. already there's already <laughs> enough stoppage time as it is right now. Um, and that's probably one of the biggest reasons why NFL viewership is on the decline. Oh yeah, it's because you play 13 minutes of actual football. Yeah, yeah. it's and, uh, it's starting to change though with all of the that, online that streaming. I, we can have a whole podcast on my feelings about the current rules and the NFL in general. Yeah, yeah. like that's that's something that really drew me to hockey at the at a young age. And I mean, it it's even more it's it's got more play time. It it's the only sport. I mean, even football or soccer, you know, whatever. Like it's literally the only sport that no, you have to literally play every second. There's no stop times. Like if it stops, the time stops. Basketball, I would say, has some stoppage time, but it's really only when, like, the end of the games where they could become a foul fest. Yeah, and that's about it. Most sports, they play, they just play. It's really just the NFL that's the worst. I mean, it's meant for oh, advertising. Yeah, <laughs> it's perfect like, for advertising. Well, I just mean that as, like, okay, so an NFL game, 60 minutes, the actual play time is usually 13 is yeah. what it's averaged out to the rest is literally all just set up things like that and like it's it's closer to that too kind of with basketball like basketball they do play but there's still a lot of time where it's just like well i dribbled up to the court and you know you can't defend that so it's just me dribbling to the other side of the court and now we're gonna spend five seconds to set up for the 25 second play clock and then run a set play yeah where with hockey, it's just like, no, you fucking go. <laughs> yeah, at least in basketball, it's scoring is so back and forth that right. it, you don't notice it. Like, it's right. not like the NFL is like they're scoring every three plays. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's just constant scoring in basketball. Yeah. And then, <clears throat> yeah, football. And I mean, they're all different sports and they're all good in their own aspects. I'll tell He's you what, though. I bet you Tom, Tom Brady's probably hype because everyone counted him out this season. I had him on my fantasy team. He did shit. And fucking lost, completely destroyed my team. I had him and Gronk I, on my team, and they just did terrible this year. Dude, but they somehow as, made it to the Super Bowl again. No, it's it's one of those things where it's like, as long as they have Belichick and Brady, I don't give a shit. You can't, if, whether you want to or not, you can't rule them out for playoffs. And I, will root, the Super Bowl. I will root for the Rams in the Super Bowl, but if they come out to like in this next two weeks and go, yeah, if we win, we're going to retire – I'm go Pats. Go win. Win, it. win yeah. it. So Brady and Belichick can just retire and we can be done with the Patriots. Yeah, for sure. I mean, dude, it, I don't know. I get why people are hate it, but it's one of those like, it's not, it, my, look, my team's not going to the playoffs anytime soon. So for me, I just want a good football game. So I'm okay with it because the final four teams were like, okay, no, you guys are actually good football teams. These were good games. There yeah. was controversy in the championship games, but it was just like, this is a pretty good game. I still think that the best Super Bowl ever was last year, Philadelphia versus the Pats. The best Super Bowl ever. No. It was so good. Eh. It, was it was so good. One, it was no, it wasn't. It was eh, scoring kind of up was. to the la to literally the last play. Was, yeah, and it's funny because of how much offense in that game. It was a defensive play that won it. Man, yeah. It was insane. Yeah. <laughs> Barnett, man. All right, let's go. Games we playing? Anyone playing anything new? I don't think so, right? Nothing. Just I'm waiting for Resident old, Evil 2. I got into Stellaris. Bunch, that's it. How's Stellaris? I know it's coming um, to console. It's it's really good. There was they released a new um, expansion for it a while ago that I never got around to. That also came with a big patch that like completely changed the economy. So it's kind of like learning a new game in a lot of aspects, but it's still a lot of fun. It's just a strategy, space strategy game? Yeah, space strategy, kind of like uh, Civilization style 4X games. But it's, I mean, it's a lot of fun because if you get, it's just expensive to make it as fun as it can be because it's Paradox. So, yeah. What does that really, mean? There's a lot of expansion packs and shit? Yeah. No, Paradox, like Paradox is notorious for basically you release a game at 40 or 60 dollars like they're the ones who do eu4 hearts of iron uh crusader kings all of those kinds of games that it's like 
oh yeah, you can now buy the base game for twenty dollars, but there's really three hundred dollars worth of expansion. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> That's like, a good way a to lot. get around it. Yeah, like they do a lot, and like they're great games, but like as long as the base game is enough. Yeah, no, the base game is enough, but like it's you always want more because like the, some of their expansions are really good and add a lot of depth and just crazy weird new shit like it's kind of it is kind of cool because every time you play it if you actually buy most of the expansions which i would never say buy unless they're on sale always they're they go on sale eight times a year wait for sales you can get all of these 75 percent off That's yeah i always see stellaris buy. on sale on steam yeah steam humble bundle etc but uh <clears throat> if you get them all on sale it's a lot of fun like there's every game is a little bit different because there's just so many random events that can happen that just actually make your playthrough kind of unique in those games, which is nice. That's pretty cool. I'm waiting for Resident Evil 2. It's been getting some yeah. banging reviews. I cannot wait. I'm probably going to get it for PC. I was thinking maybe get it for PlayStation, but I think I'm going to get it per for PC. It just ran so well on my PC, and I just want to utilize this ultra-wide. Do that, and then, you know, when you want to run those PS1 graphics mode. <laughs> yeah, true. <laughs> I do kind of want to check that out. Uh, I and I've still been playing Smash. I'm so addicted. game like that. Yeah. <laughs> I'll do like a, I'll do some sort of video with, with those graphics. Just break it. I'll, we'll figure out how to break it. So it's just like almost where it's like 8-bit. All right. This, some, uh, this first quarter has been, is going to be really good. Well, we like, got, well, all right. Let, RE2 on Friday. Yeah, Resident Evil 2 on Friday. Kingdom Hearts, when is that? Tuesday. Tuesday. Which I took off of work. Then we have the next, which is our news topic, War Groove, coming out for February 1st. Yep, it's next Friday. An Advance Wars clone made by Chucklefish coming out on the Switch, Xbox, and PS4. This is coming out on PC too, right? And PC. Yeah. Yeah, so. I'm super hyped for this. It's coming out on PC, Xbox One, and Switch on fr uh, next Friday, the February 1st. No release date yet for PS4, but it will also have cross-play day one with PC, Switch, and Xbox. Yeah, that's pretty Which, dope. That's awesome. They have a day one. Yeah. Yeah, Ch Chucklefish is... And I was watching the trailer, watching the trailer here now. I mean, the animation looks great, too. Whoever they got to do their, their anime animation looks really good. Yeah, the, I've been following the dev blog on this for a while. Um, the animation's really great. The music is actually pretty solid as well. Uh, they've released all of the unique commander like tracks. It's like your COs. So in this game, they're commanders. Right. Um, and they they're pretty really they're really solid tracks. So I'm excited to uh, to get my hands on this. Um, the cool thing about this game is besides just being like another like you know like an advance wars inspired game which nintendo's kind of given up on that franchise um is the fact that it has a map editor like the other advance wars had that you can share with anybody on the cross play there's multiplayer and there's fully made like you can make your own campaign and share it with other people yeah so not only can you make one map you can make like 15 maps Put them onto a world map, have them tie into each other, create cutscenes to tell a story, and upload it and have people play that. Yeah, I love that kind of stuff too. I love like user generated gameplay and stuff like that. Yeah, so once you're done the official like campaign that the creators have made for you, you can then play other people's creations. And for twenty bucks, like that's a really good price point. Yeah. Yeah, I'm 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 hyped for it, and it's set with like a medieval tone to it, so it's not like you know tanks and machine guns. So it's just a, it's a little bit different from Advance Wars, but still basically the same sort of gameplay, where you kind of get into a battle and it has that split screen action. You're gonna buy units, capture HQs, yeah, probably build different facilities like airports and stuff like that. But whatever they're gonna be in this game, I'm not sure what they're called. But they'll probably be like a way to build aerial aerial units, sea units. You know, it's I really love the Advance Wars like depth of gameplay. It's so addicting. It's just such an addicting game. I hope there's a lot of units. I hope you can do a lot in this game. 
it looks like a lot like there's i think there's there's a couple different factions there what looks like like plant assassins there's the dog like there's a dog commander yeah and the thing is adorable uh, there's what looks to be like sorcerers like like magic users so from everything i've seen it looks like it's going to have a pretty uh a pretty in-depth a uh, pretty deep like gameplay yeah um what else is coming out this quarter uh well we have a couple things with no release dates yet but we're expecting um we were getting we're getting um oh in april i guess is, is april considered quarter one though i think it's quarter two but that'll be Mortal Kombat. Um, I, it might be quarter one. Yeah, sometime in quarter one, we're supposed to be getting. No, it's um, quarter. It's quarter two. Yeah. Yeah, they said spring, which could be early. Like if it's March, it's still considered quarter one. But we could be getting the new uh, Fire Emblem. Nice. Uh, there's and there's a couple other things coming out, but I can't remember off the top of my head what they are. But um. And Tales, uh, Tales of Vesperia Definitive Edition came out. Which oh, we're bought. getting Anthem. Anthem. Anthem's yep, coming. That's, one. that's coming out uh, February 22nd. Yep. Crackdown, February 15th. Metro Exodus is coming out, which looks dope, on February 22nd. Devil May Cry 5, March 8th. Oh, yeah. DMC 5, which I'm really interested in checking out. Hell, yeah. Yeah, so this first quarter's got some really solid titles coming. Division it's 2 it's on March 15th. Yeah, Division 2 something. Yep. Shadows Thanks Die Twice, you. March 22nd. March 22nd, there's a bunch of good games coming out. Days Gone is coming out April 26th, even though that's Q2. Uh, let's see. Did you guys Motion. see Days oh, Gone, yeah. the trailer? Probably. Um, it, or not the trailer, the, uh, like the gameplay demo that they had. That's another zombie game, right? Yeah. See, I'm like over zombie games at this point. This one looks pretty. This one looks pretty good. It's like if it's not Last of Us, then I'm not caring. It's kind of like Last of Us, but meets meets um meets um what's the one on Steam? Um, the one that's like uh, uh Left for Dead. It's kind of like Last of Us meets Left for Dead, but there, it's like a horde zombie game. You know, where you're facing off like I think he said there was like. There was it's one where these zombie zombies survival. It's well, it's not. I don't know exactly. It looks more yeah, like action survival. survival. Yeah. Don't need Daisy eighteen. <laughs> yeah. This this one's more of like an open world, and the the scene. Let me see if I can find it. But the scene basically was set where they he walked up to like a broken down construction site, and there was like a big open pit of zombies in the middle, and they were kind of stuck in there, and then he ended up having to like put traps in the area. And then once you start started to get it into motion, all the zombies came out. But they like run at you, and they have they're they're not like your normal zombies. They're like a little bit more advanced. But there was like three hundred of them that he's fighting, and you have to clear out the entire the entire horde. So it's not just like you're facing off one or two zombies in a like Resident Evil style. This is like, you know, kind of like um, Left 4 Dead, where you're facing off like hundreds at a time, which could be pretty cool in an open world game, especially with uh, some graphics. But it looked like it was chugging a little bit, so I'm kind of worried about the performance, especially on like the PS4 base PS4. You know, this is like, it looks like a next gen title, but they got it running, so we'll see. But it looks pretty good. Speaking of which, we have PS5 leaks. All right, Ryzen and Navi. Here they are. Yeah, so the the one that console the the one that API Sack says it's the AMD Gonzalo. Which is I don't know what that means. I guess is that a code name? Everything else I've heard was was Zen cores. As long as it has Zen cores, you're, you'll be fine. It's yeah, all it says be uh, deciphering the code. We learned that the PS 5s chip will feature eight CPU cores, as on the PS4 Pro. But these CPUs will be like likely based on the next gen Zen 2 architecture, or at worst, get an upgrade to the company's incremental Zen Plus update. So then you take a look at the image here. I mean, and, Zen 2 would be sick, even if it's Zen Plus. It's still miles ahead of the bulldozer bullshit that's Jaguar. Yeah. Because you got to remember, the, even the PS4 Pro and the Xbox One X, that is, that's still Jaguar, which is bulldozer cores from like 2000. Okay, Doobie's old PC. That's yeah. what's actually in the Xbox and PS4. I think it sucked. 
Yeah. Yeah, but the, 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 it is a little bit different once it's SOC and it's and it's specifically meant. You know, it's, it's not it's not it's really carrying an OS. You know, right? It's it's software. You can do you can stretch it a lot farther. I'm just saying, it is an old tech. You no, know, if it, if it's if you get a boost from Zen to from Bulldozer, like it's it's seriously like a 150 percent upgrade. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The last um, one's Jaguar based. Looking at max CPU clock in the region at 3.2. In terms of GPU, Lee claims it will be getting a top clock speed of one or better. With still no word on AMD's forthcoming Navi architecture will feature, though it's surely odds on two. Well, so. the, and that's been the rumor too, is we're going to see Navi by the end of the year, which would line up with that because Navi currently, uh, does, since it's SOC stuff, Navi's not high end yet. So any Navi cards we might see by the end of the year are just going to be like the 580 series because that's what always goes in a console. Like the PS4s and Xbox originally, they were like 470s. Yeah, which would be enough. It would be it would yeah. be plenty for 4K 60 because, like you said, it's it's SOC. It's on a console. There's no OS, so it it can basically these developers are making it for the hardware specifically and not really meant to run in a a container on an os but that Wait, said i want to know doing eight gigs in memory just to run it right but again i i'm interested to know like what would xbox have to do to set itself away from the ps5 if it if a next gen xbox is to come Software. out no to answer as long as amd is doing both of them you can get minor gains which they're trying to do a la like the one x but software they have to actually have games there's yeah, no but I'm saying input. I'm saying hardware wise, like power wise. So you know, do the same thing with the the One X, where they can design a better power management system and overclock it more. That's about it. Yeah, still going to be like pretty similar base spec parts. It's just what they can do more with them to get more power out of them. But it's that. I mean, it's like the One X. I still don't see hordes of people buying a One X because there's no games for it. Yeah. Yeah, they're gonna need to figure they're gonna need to figure something out if the PS5 is coming out pretty soon and the Xbox One X was released not too long ago. And the Xbox One X is pretty good. It does 4K 30 pretty consistently. Some games do 4K 60, so they gotta they're gonna have to step it up. <clears throat> how many uh, how many teraflops are you looking at for the PS5? <laughs> I don't know. I don't think Zen has or AMD architecture uses teraflops. Yeah, they do because you want to shut up about it with the one x oh you're right <laughs> teraflops is just a system of measurement for which for what the gpu though yeah well it's it's a mathematical measurement i'm gonna google T ps5 teraflops and it was the only thing that they kept running their mouth about about xbox one is how many teraflops it had ps5 will run at eight teraflops for true 4k that's what this which article states still less than an nvidia 1070 it always be <laughs> And it's like one of the most useless fucking numbers, but we'll run with it. You need the teraflops. <laughs> you need to know how many flops you're having. All right. Uh, 2018 switch sales data and 20 million goal update. What do we have here, Doobie? What am so, I looking at? We are looking at apparently the switch was in 2018, the highest selling console in the United States, France, and Japan. Um, which I honestly I kind of expect. Like, it's the newer system. The other systems have been out for a while, so everyone's already bought theirs. So their competition's not as stiff. Um, but the interesting thing, really, is... So, they set up a goal for their fiscal year to sell 20 million units um, globally. Uh, and it kind of everyone kind of, like, scoffed at it. Kind of laughed at them, like, yeah, you will see. Uh, but now, apparently, Wall Street Journal is reporting that analysts are increasingly believing that they will, that they are, the goal is now realistic. And that's just kind of like confirms that the software has been really pushing the system. Smash Brothers did exceedingly well. It's, I think it's been record breaking numbers for that franchise. Um, so, I mean, hitting that many systems this quickly reminds me a lot of like how the Wii did. Hmm. You remember how the Wii sold? Like, there no. were. There were times where you couldn't even find any place that was carrying the Wii. 
it hit that casual market so hard. And now they're in budget bins everywhere. <laughs> oh yeah, I mean Louis, we <clears throat> Louis did not age very well. No. But at the time it was like Well, I think the Switch's there. timing was really good as well. Because it kind of came at the end of these units' life cycles. And that's usually around the time where you're going to get a few of, like, the last run of, like, good games. But you're not going to get, like, that, you know, like, when PS5 and Xbox get released, there's, like, that, usually that second year mark where there's just so many games coming out for it. And it's really hard to compete with. The Switch was like, we'll wait for you to, we'll wait for that hump to pass and then we'll mm -hmm. bring out the Switch. It also has that price point where, like... 300 versus what I'm assuming we're going to be saying 450 to 500 for the PS5 and Xbox One uh, 2, wherever the hell I call it. Um, that price point is more in line with like, that $10 price point, more in line with like families um, versus like when those two new systems drop at like 450, 500, it's going to be a lot of early adopters and people who like just know they want that system. Yeah. But as far as reaching like a casual market, it's a little harder to do with that price point, which yeah. is understandable. Especially when PC pricing has gotten more competitive too. Oh yeah, yeah exactly. And your PC does. If you're going, if like if you're hitting 500, you you can get a decent gaming PC at that price by the time this comes out. Yeah. Yeah, it's not going to hit 4K, but I still think that 4K is for the most part for the enthusiasts at the moment. Oh, entirely. Gaming yeah, at 4K, so. unless you're on a TV yeah. gaming at 4K, is stupid. Exactly. Yeah. But like, it, it's one of those things that like, it it depends on where that person's priorities are too. Because like, if you're just going for gaming and you want to spend 500 bucks, yeah, console's great. But if you're like, well, I got 500 bucks and I can get, I can play games on a computer, but I can also use it for everything else a computer does. That's a draw too. Well, now with Twitch being so big and Fortnite being so big, kids want to start streaming. They want to play. They want to play on Twitch, and that PC market makes it way easier for them to do so than getting, you know, a PC and or a laptop, and then getting a console, getting the Elgato, setting all that up. You just get a PC and you start running with it. I didn't and you put start this streaming. In the news. I didn't Especially put this in the news. with all of the AMD rumors that are going on with Zen Two, like that's going to become super realistic on the low end. Yeah. So I didn't mention this in the news, but Netflix came out and said that they view um they view YouTube, but more importantly, they view uh Fortnite as their biggest competitor. Fortnite? Netflix has said that Fortnite is their biggest competitor. Really quick, Doobie, your mic is like jumping it's up and down off. pretty heavily. Sorry, I kinda yeah. backed away a little bit. That's um, actually yeah. really interesting. Yeah, they came out and said that like Fortnite specifically Fortnite's kind of taking a lot of their base away. <laughs> Kids are just watching Fortnite. <laughs> That's Instead, crazy. Either just watching Fortnite or playing Fortnite and not watching Netflix. That's crazy. It's that Fortnite and chill now. Wow. Yeah, just it's Fortnite. pretty interesting that like they didn't list Twitch or they I guess maybe through Fortnite they maybe meant Twitch as well. Yeah, like indirectly. Yeah indirectly because people watching it because that's what like a ton of kids not only play but also watch for i mean it. it's also it is it does kind of suck too though because like it, fortnite got too fucking big and i mean that is like okay i'm looking for news right now on pc gamer and the first article is the best fortnite headset uh, oh yeah that makes sense yeah, like I don't think we're gonna see much of that computer or Xbox or anything. No, the best Fortnite headset. I think I, this is the year where we start to see that start to dwindle a little bit. I think people I are getting sick hope. of it. I know. Yeah, I give it another year before, and then maybe we'll see. And what I mean, happens. it's gonna, it's yeah, gonna, no. it's gonna do better and longer than PUBG did, just because yeah. it's free. But at the same time, like, I mean, it depends on what else comes out too. But I like, right. I, I don't know if they'll go on a League of Legends style rampage where it's the top of Twitch for six years or whatever, you know. Well, I think what's interesting, I have two little cousins and they fucking love Fortnite. They oh, play yeah. it all the time. Every time we have family stuff, they want to take my Switch and play Fortnite. It's uh, one of those everyone does. Like but just yesterday, dude, I, okay, um, a sports blog I follow who talks about the Detroit Lions. They stream Twitch like three times a week, just playing Fortnite and talking about the Lions 
and they do it enough to the point that they've random since they have press cr- credentials they've been playing with random members of the detroit lions like on tuesday nights of just streaming t- Fortnite and talking about football yeah like it's that fucking huge but i will say my cousin's Fortnite kind of like got them into gaming and multiplayer competitive gaming and stuff. That's what I mean. But now they're kind of like, he's getting a little bit older and now he's like, hey, let's play Call of Duty. You know, let's play something that has a little bit more violence to it. I can see a little bit of blood and kind of tap into his primal urges. That's and I thought that was so interesting because that was like kind of how Counter Strike was for me. Like, right. Counter Strike got me into like you know pc gaming and but then i wanted that extra little brutality to it, and then i started playing battlefield you know right i think league of legends did that for a lot of people too like that yes. is that is the hope for right. me at least for fortnite currently is like that's what it is yeah, yeah let it be the gateway drug like sure i'm gonna hate it and whatever but like i i we're on a gaming podcast i want a gateway drug to hook kids in yeah <laughs> See, I, got, I got spoiled as a kid because my first three fps games i can really remember playing or i guess my first four was counter-strike quake arena yeah unreal tournament uh, golden eye yeah unreal yeah, tournament well, uh, yeah golden eye but like i'm talking like like definitely better controls and more like that competitive scene um halo definitely halo the original halo yep hours of blood definitely gulch there. yeah mm-hmm. and then um half-life yeah, yep. Half Life. Like Half Life for me all was like the quintessential first person shooter. All of those, and then uh, Warcraft Three ruined me for the rest of eternity. <laughs> I got spoiled like, as a kid. Conquer and all those RTS games of like, nope, I need a, com- I need a computer because this is all I do with my life now is <laughs> play Stellaris and stupid. I want to conquer the universe. Yeah. All right, moving on. Season 2, DBZ, DBFZ, and a new action RPG in Dragon Ball World will be unveiled this week, weekend at FighterZ World Tour Finals. So what happened was they had an event last week where they're like, come see us. We're going to talk about Dragon Ball Fighters with a big announcement. We're going to talk about Xenoverse 2, which they're still supporting that game. And then they announced a new card game. Wow. What wound up happening was they did those two things but for dragon ball fighters they did literally nothing they came out at the very end and went oh yeah dragon ball fighter news big announcement check out this weekend coming up for a big announcement Hmm. and (laughs) pissed off a lot of people uh so they did come out and finally say um that they are making a new action rpg game apparently like the artwork they've shared in the dragon ball world you're saying yeah, like in the Dragon Ball world, like apparently the photo they like showed that could looks to be an in-game render is like the beginning of Dragon Ball of Dragon Ball Z, where like Kid Gohan with that Dragon Ball on his hat, like Raditz showing up kind of style, like that era. So I mean, it's gonna be interesting to see what happens, because um, action RPG is such a generic term these days, right? Yeah. Um. So yeah. Like Xenoverse is considered a fighting game, but you can also argue that it's an action RPG. So I'm wondering if this is going to be like a Xenoverse 3 style game or if it's going to be an actual like action RPG. I mean, I hope it's an actual RPG. Yeah, I hope it's a different, like something different. I, I like different and we'll see. As far as Dragon Ball Fighters goes, season two was kind of like, has been the rumors and the, the like the data mining has been around for a while now and they did confirm that jiren is the first fighter jiren for those who don't know is the from the latest arc that wasn't the movie that came out by the way great movie i loved it um the last arc was a tournament of power and jiren was like the ultimate bad no i'm bad guy but he was the ultimate like he was the strongest one um but he was boring as fuck his character was completely bland however he is the first uh, new fighter and hopefully they might announce some more stuff this weekend but if you are into dragon ball fighters um check out this weekend's world tour finals for info you know, for an announcement all right yeah you just said jiro confirms character season two power rangers fighting game 
I saw this and I laughed my ass off. Power Rangers fighting game leaked and announced 20 bucks on all consoles and PC. Expectations are very tempered. I'm tempering my expectations because it's also 20 bucks. Oh, wait, hold on. We got gameplay footage here. You got a trailer and you got to stick around for that end of that trailer, man. All right, let's check it out. Come into console and PC. All right, let's see this bad boy real quick. Oh my god, it looks so stupid. <laughs> I I I know. I do like that it's like definitely paying homage to like the first season, but also other seasons. Cause like I only really know seasons one and two of Power Rangers. Oh my god, this is so and of course season. and of course they had to throw Tommy in there. Dude, Tommy came to my Tiger Sh Tiger Shulman's karate school near my house. And it was amazing. <laughs> That's great. That was so long ago, dude. Well, this is their newer uniforms, right? Um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know. I it doesn't look like the ones that I dressed up as. Yeah, like this yeah, is the kind, pre version They kind of do. The pre order version 2 isn't, but like the first like characters they show is the Red Ranger and Green Ranger. Those are the classic designs. Are they? But there's been... Wait, I'm right, if you if you look up... Let's look them up. If you look up Power Rangers and just see how many Yeah, that looks old school Power Rangers. Rangers. Yeah, the first two do. And then, like, the other one was the yellow one. Yeah, the yellow yeah, one. The I don't know what series that's from. But there's been, like, I think an additional 20 series now. There was ninjas and dinosaurs. They've gone all over the place with the Power Rangers franchise. Power Rangers was dope. Yeah, I don't recognize the yellow one. You're no, right. It's more than the newer ones. But as a kid, like seasons one and two in the movie, say what you will about the movie and say what you will about Ivan Ooze. I loved it. I still think it's great, even though it's super cheesy. The Yellow Ranger was the Asian lady. Right. In in but the original the series. Like that. Oh, but right. that outfit, the, the dinosaur things, but like the yeah, the cast that that does look like a yeah. costume. I don't remember. And there was a season after they blew up the place and they went into space and then they had the stars as their face mask i don't remember much about that one and then the but white like, the white power ranger <laughs> yeah the only thing i really think like i mean the white power ranger is the, the best white ranger. the white ranger i'm wondering like, oh he's the white power ranger <laughs> i'm wondering how this game is going to hand come like how it's going to be from from a gameplay perspective um it's 20 bucks also like which I don't know for a fighting game based on like a franchise. It's it's kind of a sign. It's gonna it be, be it's gonna be trash. Are you kidding me? I have a feeling it's gonna be trash. It looks so dumb. This commercial is terrible. But it's definitely, it's definitely playing off of the nostalgia factor. Yeah, yeah, a nostalgia factor. Just quite watch big. Evo next year is just Power Rangers. Just Power Rangers. <laughs> No, it's that hot new Evo game. Every week we talk about Doobie's new fucking Power Ranger reveal. <laughs> There's yo Character man. Reveal. Are, are you not ready for Alpha Five? <laughs> 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 and his only special move is is like flailing his arms. Rangers, Rangers. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you wanna you wanna take the next news? I'll be right back. Yeah, I got you. I got some uh, of that on later. So. So the uh, the rumor was confirmed with the Mortal Kombat 11 reveal event. Ronda Rousey is Sonya Blade, That's which I cool. guess it makes sense. It makes yeah. sense. I don't know how she's gonna be as a voice actor because she's doing the voice acting as well. But I watch wrestling and she's like, you know, she's the Raw Women's Champion right now. Um, her mic skills were pretty pretty mediocre at first, but they're getting better. So maybe she'll be good in this role. Either way, the game looks sick. I don't know, have you seen it? Yeah, I'm watching it now. It seems it seems cool. Definitely, uh, definitely gory. Very gory. The fatalities they've shown. Um, definitely, uh, they're they're utilizing the graphics engines. That's for sure. Yeah, like I I do get what you're saying too. Where like, at least with like her interview, it's like. You I don't see very animated for Mortal Kombat, you know, <laughs> like, but, yeah. but it could, I mean, it could, it could be, end up being really cool. Like, I mean, I kinda, it kind of makes sense. Okay. You think like the baddest uh, woman in fighting games, you, on a, you pretty much think Sonya Blade. You're talking about Ronda Rousey? Yeah. 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 Like when I think, I think, when I think of badass yeah. females in fighting games, I think 
either Chun Li or Sonya Blade. Those mm. are the two that come to mind. Definitely Sonya Blade, yeah. Yeah, and Ronda Rousey being, you know, one of the baddest women on the planet. Who was makes the, sense. Who was the original yeah. Sonya Blade? What was her name? She was their girl in uh, Madison, Billy Madison. Uh, oh, in, oh God! More in the original Mortal Kombat movie. Yeah, you know, that wasn't that wasn't her. Because that oh, not I'm, Billy Madison. I'm pretty know. sure. Wait, she, wasn't her? I'm pretty sure. Oh, actually, wow, Veronica might have been her. Well, I did. Yeah, not know yeah, that. I know. <laughs> I'm pretty I sure. I I can't. I need to find the IMDb. I'm looking that up too. Let's I see. Did not realize that. But essentially, Ronda Rousey could be the next, whatever her name is. Let's see. What's her name? Bridget, Bridget Wilson, Wilson Sampras. Yeah, it's her. Billy Madison. Wow. <laughs> I did not realize she was in Mortal Kombat. Yeah. Wow, that's crazy. Because she wasn't in the yeah. second one either. It was a different actress in the second one. Yeah, she was in the first one. She's a Billy Madison and Last Action Hero. That's she, pretty crazy. She had a pretty good run in, in my uh, upbringing. <laughs> yeah, no, right but I, I think Ronda Rousey as Sonya Blade is perfect. I think... Yep. I think I, yeah, I don't know. I think it'll end up being very good. But like what I was saying is like I think she's the perfect role model for it and i think it, for for like telegraphing moves that's absolutely the best but like voice acting voice acting she didn't yeah. see that right. and yeah like, i'm gonna that that's the that's the part where it's like i think she can do it but i need to hear her actually get hyped because like yeah. mortal Kombat, you know it was always like kind of japanese style hype of like stupidly screaming you know and i just that that's what i you mean you mean raiden's classic <laughs> yeah <laughs> like so good or what's his name uh kung laos what a whoop what a whoop yeah toasty <laughs> yo there better be toasty in this game that's all i'm saying ronda rousey's ever since she left the ufc to do the wwe she's been killing it which is pretty surprising i thought her career was over after her loss in the ufc but she's really well, she's, made a name for herself She's a um, like a hardcore nerd, actually. Yeah. Um, she's like openly expressed how much she loves Dragon Ball, like Dragon Ball Z, Pokemon. Like she's, she's cornered that market. She, she's cornered that market yeah. for sure. She's definitely like, definitely um, utilizing her kind of like a little bit of her geek upbringing as well into like parlaying that into some of this. Yeah, she's and smart. The WWE, like her mic skills were pretty mediocre when she got in, but they got better over time. They're getting better. Like she can okay. cut, she cut a pretty good. She can, she's cut like, I think her last promo was actually good. I would say it was a good promo. Um, so that helps. Maybe this was one of the reasons why it helped getting vocal training. Yeah, I wonder when yeah. does this game come out? Do you know? This one comes like, out I soon. Think, I think she can yeah. do it. I just need to see it to believe it on the voice side, just because it. More, I mean, Mortal Kombat to me always was one April of the twenty third. April twenty third. Yeah, P- PS four, Xbox <sighs> One, Nintendo Switch, and PC. However, the March twenty eighth beta is only for PS four and Xbox One if you pre order. I'm I'm hyped for it. I love these. Uh, what are they called? Uh, who makes this? Uh, not Insomniac. Nether Realms. Nether Realms. Yeah. Yeah. NRS. Nether Realms Studios. Yeah. I mean, after like Injustice. Injustice after Injustice, I'm all about. So you played Injustice too, right? Yeah. Love. So I don't it. know. Did you watch the reveal event for MK11? Oh yeah. Yeah. So like that gear system, it looks like they've refined that in like that um Injustice two gear system, so that now it's not like the boosts and stuff are not tied to the gear. You can right. have. You can kind of choose what you want. Yeah. No, I'm hyped for that. I was watching Sonic Fox play against someone, I forget his name, and just, it looks good. It looks like another round fighting game. It looks more like Injustice, except with, you know, way more carnage, which I'm all about. You know if Rain gets put in this game from MKX, Sonic Fox is going to take him and win. Yeah. <laughs> He's so, it was crazy watching him play because he just learned the game, like, while he was playing. It was really interesting. Like, the dude is a fucking genius when it comes to fighting games. It really... I hope he can last more than, like, you know, three years. You know? His I, pro- I mean, his only problem is he he plays too many games. He's just... Yeah. His hands are going to be so fucked in the next few years. I mean, he's... And, like, it's hard. Like, and he's good at so many games. But, like, each game is different how you play, your inputs, your timing. 
and he just really gets really good at all of them. Yeah. Yeah, like he was like learning games. learning like frames and stuff while he's playing. And I was just like, oh my God. Imagine having that hand eye coordination to know like ten frames versus eleven frames. Yeah. <laughs> and knowing <laughs> in the heat of the battle when to do that. You know what I mean? While you're just learning this game. Like, I'm sure, like, this game is sort of new for him. It's like some Rain Man shit. Rumor, legendary looking legendary looking at doing two new Pokemon movies. Woohoo. <laughs> I, think, I think it depends on how Detective Pikachu comes out. Like I said, yeah. this movie, I don't, I still don't know how to feel about this thing. I'm going to see it. I mean, if oh, it's yeah. on Netflix, I'll watch it, but I'm not going to see it. You're insane that you're going to go see this I'm movie. absolutely going to see it because I Dude, need I, to get I will an take opinion on it. <laughs> go lap at Ryan Reynolds. Especially <laughs> doing a great job. Like hell yeah, I'll, I'll eventually see it. Yeah, I, I mean, just don't gonna... understand. He doesn't. Pikachu has never talked before. Exactly, it, and except, now it's Ryan except, Reynolds. Except, so. except <laughs> in the Detective Pikachu game, he did talk. Oh, did he? In the game that this is based on, yeah. Oh, I didn't even know it was based on a real game. Yeah, this is based on a game for the 3DS. Oh God, I forgot about that game. I, I did still not know think that. that Danny DeVito should have been Pikachu. Oh, for sure, or like Billy Crystal. <laughs> All right. Oh man. Um, yeah. Other random news. Did you guys see new Far Cry bullshit? Uh, I saw it's it, but I didn't watch it. Light RPG mechanics. I saw new that. Dawn or whatever. Yeah, they're calling it an evolution, and they're saying that it's going to have light RPG elements. Yeah, mm-hmm. let's wa- let's watch it real quick. What does that mean? Light RPG mechanics. Fuck if I know. <laughs> <laughs> like upgrade your gun. <laughs> like every I other fucking. So. I mean, I'm cool with that. Far Cry is pretty fun. I th- I think that would actually probably help Far Cry if there was like some right, like RPG. Oh, like Far like- Cry gets the mechanic, some of the mechanics from like uh, what's the hell's that game? Um, Borderlands. Yeah. Borderlands. Yeah. Or right. like even yeah. Or like even like Fallout. Like, cool. You get a gun. You have a crafting bench where you can add a scope and make it slightly better or something yeah. like that. Yeah, and let more a little bit more complex than what's already in Far Cry. It's like super yeah. rudimentary, rudimentary, because this is a this is a Fallout like game. So it would be cool if you found like, hey, I need to go hunt for some iron to make this special weapon. So I got to go down to this dilapidated building and clear it out. And like I like that kind of stuff. And yeah, I th- I it's just it's crazy that Far Cry is just like. Like, they make so many of these fucking games. Yeah. And this one looks a little bit different. Like, I'm watching some of the gameplay now, and there's, like, hit markers now with, like, actual hit points. Like, it looks, like, more, way more like an RPG. I think they need to do more in this kind of style, though. Because, like, like uh, the Blood Dawn or Blood Rain, whatever. You know, like, all of the weirder Far Cries have been the best Far Cries. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, if they keep making just really out there, dumb, weird ones, I'm so down. Yeah. My favorite one was, I think it was Far Cry 2 with that crazy villain. And it was a weird, it was such a weird story. And it was just a weird setting. And you got into weird predicaments. It was fun. Um, And then the other thing I saw, which made me chuckle, Star Citizen apparently has raised $200 million dollars. What? And has also actually spent, according to them, two hundred million dollars developing this piece of shit game that will, will never launch. <laughs> Are you serious? Two hundred million dollar mark? Oh, that was back in uh, November last year. Yeah, they, that's when they made it, but they came out and said they spent it already. Saying they have actually spent that much developing it. Oh, I believe wink, it for wink. sure. I believe it for sure. I I commend them because. I remember playing, um, what is it? It's not a demo, but it was like a very, it was almost like a demo of the alpha. I don't know if you remember when they had that, they had that, um, that thing you could download and get into it and you would put on the Oculus and you would kind of test it out a little bit. And I remember watching some, some of the gameplay from it as well. And it, and it, it's just such a I grand it's t- at least it finally has gameplay. Yeah. For like the first four years, there wasn't even gameplay. You just got to go into a fucking ship hangar. No. Yeah. 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 No. Now there's the, the last thing I seen about it, which was, I don't know, maybe a year ago, there were like 
worms that came out of this fucking planet and there was you, you, they got into the ship left came back worms came out they were meeting other people i mean it's a super ambitious project who knows how the hell they're gonna finish it because it seems like they're not even close to being done still yeah i mean there is actually gameplay and it's it looks decent the graphics look insane you're right and that was always the calling card of this game but like you gotta have I mean, look at Destiny. You actually have to have a good game behind it. Because a lot of this is looking very Destiny-ish to me. Yeah, I like really just want it to be... Mo- i much rather it be more of like a VR chat experience that has somewhat of like No Man's Sky-like algorithms where you can just... There's Dude, the universe is infinite, you, you know? You can't do that, though, at this point. No. You can't have taken $200 million over like eight years or whatever and then be like... It's VR chat in the spaceship. <laughs> well, then just give us guns too. Throw guns in it. Let us shoot each other. I'd be happy with that. Maybe some sort of. I mean, I don't. I, who knows how they're gonna even release this type of game with that money? Like, it's you know they're gonna sell for sixty bucks, and then how many expansion packs are there gonna be to to get what you want out of it? You know, how long is it gonna be in alpha and then beta? I'm excited though. I I I two hundred million dollars is insane. That's almost near Grand Theft Auto levels. Everything I've heard about it has been pretty bad. Really? Demo from demo wise, yeah. There's nothing to do. Yeah. There's really nothing to do. There's, still, there's never been anything to do. So the hope always is there will be something to do. And um, I gave up on that about seven years ago. Yeah. All right, let's jump into the tech portion of the show real quick. I got a new camera. I rented the Canon EOS R mirrorless camera, and I've been complaining about this camera for for a while now. Ever? I was going to say that's the only thing you do on this show. <laughs> Since it came out. And then I was like, I was using my, I, I have my Sony a7R three, which is like my main studio rig in the office. And that's what I shoot all my, my videos on. But I wanted a camera that I could use just to like shoot, just shoot around with like kind of like my play camera. And I had the a6300 and the a7S two. None of them have a screen. One doesn't have IBIS in it. And the a7S two, um, it just, it just didn't have a screen and I just couldn't, this, this, the screen is why I bought this camera. It's so fucking convenient, and I don't know why Sony doesn't put it on. Because I literally sold those cameras to get this camera. And luckily, I barely had to pay anything for it. Um, and it's just, it's, it's, an, it's, it's awesome. You're getting ca- Canon's colors. You're getting great preamps in the camera. You're getting a flippy screen. It doesn't have uh, in-body, in- in-body stabilization, but it does have optical stabilization and it doesn't have it has 4k with a crop and that's the biggest downside that i have with it is that the 4k crops in almost two times which is insane but i've been mainly shooting in 1080p recently because the 1080p on here is so good just uh just the codec wise the sony shoots 1080p at i think it's like 30 30 megabits per second where canon's 1080p is 400 so you're getting just a much bigger, much sharper that's, 1080p image. Yeah, where, that's a huge fucking difference. Yeah, and you can definitely see it. If you look at my last two videos on my other channel, they're uploaded all, off of this camera. And you can just tell me, and it's like, it's not t- it's not 4K, but it's way better than a lot of the 1080p you'll see on like a, you know, like a Casey Neistat video or a David Dobrik video where they're using the old IB- IPB codex that are around 100 megabits per second, 1080p. They're just way softer. The 1080p on this is great, and I, I like it. It's a nice little rig. Do I recommend you buy it? If you're someone who shoots like vlogging style or you shoot talking head style, you're not literally running around all the time, then I absolutely there's, a, there's no other option for you if you need a flip screen. Sony just released the A6400 with a flip up screen, but that means you can't put a fucking mic on top and there's no stabilization in it so we're hoping that sony releases the new a7 uh a7s3 with the flip out to the side screen because then if that's the case then this this bad boy's going back and i'll pick that one up but so far getting back into canon has been it's been nice i have missed a lot about canon the fact that you can actually use this touch screen to go through menus is beautiful because you can't do that on sony for some reason 
Who it's just like have, little like quality of life things are so nice on Canon. You have like what seventy years of quality glass too. Yep, I have the ten to eighteen, which is like the vlog lens, and then I have the uh, twenty four to seventy, the the newest twenty four to seventy, which is really nice lens, and it's just beautiful, beautiful camera, beautiful camera, beautiful lenses. I mean, I still have like fifty mil prime Canon lens that like any camera I've bought, and I just get an adapter for it. Oh yeah, it's that fucking good. I mean, it's a thirty year old piece of glass at this point. It's still that good. Yeah. No, they when it comes to glass, and they don't make their well. I should say their EF EFS lenses. They're not gigantic like Sony lenses are. Like if I were to take my A seven R three out and then take my twenty four to seventy, it's a lot. It's a lot to carry around. With this one, the twenty four to seventy is like pretty light. This camera is light. It feels so much better than the Sony camera. Like there's an actual grip on it and it just feels good in your hand. It's the best thing I can say about this camera and just Canon in general compared to Sony is that this camera is way more inviting. Like you want to shoot with it. You want to turn it on, flip the camera towards you and just kind of have fun with it. Whereas Sony, it's very utilitarian. It's, it's mainly a tool and that's how I view all those cameras, which is something that they, they're going to need to figure out. Because I think a lot of people like me are in that same position where we're kind of getting fed up with a lot of Sony's just stupid walls that they're putting up, like not putting a flip screen on it, gimping the 6400 by not putting IBIS in it, by not getting the right color schemes, by not supporting certain codecs. Like, why are you giving us 1080p at, you know, 30 megabits per second? That's laughable, you know? So they're going to have to figure that stuff out, but they will. They'll, they'll figure it out. They're still new. Canon's been in it for a while. They played catch up, but I do think th this camera's gotten a lot of hate and I was one of them, but now I understand why a lot of people are like, wait a second. <laughs> Canon, also, Canon actually does know what they're doing. <laughs> yeah. I mean, what was that? Uh, I think you showed me a video a while ago of one guy who was like ripping on it for like a year and then he actually bought one and like it kind of finally clicked and it was like, no, this is actually probably the best camera at that price point. Yeah. Yeah, and there's a guy called Camera Conspiracies who in the camera world is blowing up on YouTube and he does like a lot of like critical videos of cameras and camera YouTubers and he's been saying like, look, this is this, the Canon EOS R or the 60 Mark II, which is the other full frame, are literally the only cameras that will give you what you want or give you what you need, but Canon is just not giving us what we want right now. And Sony comes along and they give us what we want, but they don't give us what we need. So we're in this kind of weird position. So my life, yeah, <laughs> so my life, my life of the tech world where it's exactly it's looking at you, Apple and Google. <laughs> you know, I tell someone like Kate that, and she's like, "Well, they do it on purpose, so you buy yeah. all types of shit." And I'm like, "Yeah, well, that's why they do it." Oh no, especially cameras, dude. That's that's always been why I that like that so annoying. Kind of really drove me out of photography for a yeah. long time, to be honest. And was then like smartphones come around and now they're all scrambling to get their shit together. Yeah. Cause for she's, she's right. Cause for a long time. And that's what I've been saying even on the show is just, no, the camera world is we will nickel and dime you as much as fucking possible. Yep. Because there's no competition. Yep. Where there's three, four, eh, five companies that all compete with each other and all basically do the same thing. Yet no one can release the one camera that we all want. <laughs> it makes yeah. no fucking and it's been that this way for decades. Like so. it was, it's always one of those like, and it's it's the biggest industry I think of diminishing returns. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Price like like even compute like they make computers look good, and computers like rate of diminishing returns is already fucking stupid. Yeah. But like you can go buy like a good five hundred, seven hundred dollar camera, but if you spend twice as much, you're gonna get like a little bit more, like maybe two percent better. Yeah. All right, and the other thing is, hold on, be right back. It's just kind of absurd. The other thing I want to talk about is the Apple Smart Case. I got it in. By the way, I ordered the Bridge keyboard for. Uh, the iPad and I just got an email from them saying that I didn't make the first pre-order and I'm like that's not literally not even possible because I ordered it immediately when I got that email <laughs> so I get I think they're selectively giving them out 
to you know i guess people who are going to write reviews on it kind of shitty i i'm gonna have to wait a little bit longer for that and i was thinking maybe i'll just cancel it i'm kind of i don't even want uh, it anymore no i think it's i think it's partially that but it's also bridge still isn't that big of a company yeah no i'm gonna i'm gonna hold off because i know once it comes out if i cancel my pre-order i'm gonna hate myself but i got the uh battery case it's 130 dollars for this fucking thing um but the reason why you're paying the money for it is essentially the way that it it integrates with the uh, the os so what 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 you get is anything that i plug it into to charge it manages the charge so you're not overcharging your phone you're not undercharging it it's not stuck in when you when you use something like a Mophie or just some other battery case that isn't integrated with iOS, it sends your phone and it thinks it's plugged into the wall. So then it takes it out of mobile mode and then it just drains the battery even quicker. This doesn't do that. You're getting uh you can see your battery status in the in the OS itself and you can be sure that it's not over draining your phone and and you know hurting the battery. It has the um, the wireless capabilities to to charge it efficiently so if i put it down and my phone needs to be charged and i wirelessly charge it it'll send the the correct amount of charge either to my phone or to the case itself and i think that's pretty cool i think all that little technology is nice um now do i recommend you go out and buy one i i would if you like to have this style of phone you know if you're someone who travels around a lot and you don't um, want to carry a power brick which I don't yeah, like if you to do. Travel a lot, and that's about it. Yeah. No. If you're if you're if you're coming home every night and you're charging your phone every night, there's really no need to have one. It is nice to not worry about your battery, but you're sacrificing size, man. Like it it's, it, I mean, it makes it a big phone. That, and it's like, I mean, I still don't trust Apple entirely with battery tech, to be honest. And that's mostly just because of like they how badly they fucked up the SE's battery. So it does scare me a little bit where it's just like, and it's, it's the same with any company. I don't want to leave. It's an, it's a lithium ion battery. I don't want to leave two of them on my phone all the time. Yeah. Well, essentially it just turns it into one big battery, you know, it's, it's, yeah, it's, it's better than a battery than an external more, battery it's failure. And just like, you know, cause it still is an external battery. Yeah. But, but I don't know, like uh, my girlfriend right now, she bought an SE a year ago. The battery's already fucking gone. Yeah. Like that's absolutely absurd to me. Yeah. That's crazy. She has an SE. Yeah. No, her whole family loves SEs because they all have tiny hands. Tell them to sell them. People no, are like dying they, to get them. Yeah. No, the, they, yeah, that's what her dad did. And he finally just switched to an XR, but like they kept buying SEs because like, Love her, but like, no, their their hands are fucking tiny. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that phone's a little too small. If it was a full screen, I'd be all for it. But that screen is so tiny. <laughs> I know, dude. It's like a calculator. Same. Same. Without that body in a full like full screen, like an XR. Oh, it'd be perfect. It would be sick. Yep. It'd be perfect. But no, not with those bezels. <laughs> it's a little too. What is it? A four inch screen, right? It's still 3.5. <laughs> oh my god. It's a calculator. I think my fuck it might as well have an Apple Watch. All right, moving on to news. Oh, do I recommend you go get it? N- not really. <laughs> not really. Think, yeah. If you those, if you get a battery it's, case, it's I'd recommend you get this battery case over yeah. like a Mophie or anything else. That's about like it. If, if if you're a jet setter where like your your life is business travel, hell yeah. Any other person, no. Yeah. It's like even if you're like, okay, I'm gonna take two trips a year, like go buy a twenty five dollar anchor battery and you'll be good. Right. All right, moving on. Or if you're someone who does um does like live streaming and stuff, takes a lot of video, you might want the the battery power because it does. I mean, you it, yeah. I, this like, I haven't charged this thing yet. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah, like I think there are there are niche niche users who I think it's a good deal for, but like yeah, vast majority why. Yeah, the batteries are fucking you, really you good buy, on the phones, man. You don't really need extra battery power. I have buy, a battery pack that I barely use. I use it for my iPad every once in a while. Yeah, no, like this is a this is a product that I should recommend you buy two years from now. Yeah. When your phone's battery is actually dead. Till then, why? All right, into news. Google snatches up some of Fossil's Fossil Watches secret smartwatch tech. So they're getting uh, some of that 
Fossil smartwatch technology and members of the research and development division responsible for creating it. The deal is roughly worth 40 million. And under current uh, current terms, Fossil will transfer a portion of its R&D team, the portion directly responsible for the intellectual property being sold over to Google. So hopefully, this makes Wear OS a little better. To say I won't, it's not going to save Wear OS, <laughs> but at the same time, like part of me really wants it to, because like of all of the watches, Fossil's look the best. This is what they that. need to do. They need to do what Fossil does: make nice watches analog watches but with like smart features in them yeah. maybe put an ekg in it and that's it maybe you can have you know certain notifications come up but not the entire not like how apple does it where it's an entire little computer on your wrist yeah. unless it's going to be like apple's where it's fluid it's built into the i the the os it's you know it needs to be like that otherwise there's no point point. and i mean even doing that like I, I, none sorry none of them look good to me no, 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 no. There hasn't ever been a smartwatch that's like, does it just make me think it's a fucking wrist calculator watch? No. <laughs> like, no, but the like, fossil ones are pretty dope. Yeah, because it's a watch, you know? Like, it just yeah. it looks good. Yeah. Yeah, the fossil ones look pretty nice. So, like, the, there is a lot of hope for me where it's like, please make something that is actually cool and you can use on anything. Yeah. But realistically, Google has no fucking idea what they're doing. No, it's what Google does. They buy stuff and they try it out for a couple of years and then they cut it off. Yeah. Teenage Engineering debuts an affordable entry into modular synthesis. So Teenage Engineering is the company behind the coveted OP1. If you don't know what the OP1 is, I've been meaning to buy one for years now. I just, I just been waiting. I haven't gotten the guts to pick one up. But it's like a synth modular sort of it's a it's a portable synthesizer that it's awesome. If you want to go check it out, just Google or YouTube OP1 videos, and there's a ton of uh, musicians who use it, and you'll see what I'm talking about. It's such an awesome little synth. Um, one of my friends who's a musician loves it. Like he he's been dying to get one as well. He was able to use one of his buddies, and he says it's the most fun thing ever. If you like music and making music, it's a fun it's, it's a fun thing to have. It's like one of the coolest ones since uh, all of the neat Roland ones. Yeah. Uh, Roland yeah. used to like have this like of small portable synths they had the corner marketed. Yeah. Because they had a bunch of really good synths for a long time that are still fucking fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. Those are a little bit more traditional ones. This one's more of like a, it's almost like having FL Studio like in a nice little mechanical keyboard body. It's really cool. But yeah, no, it's it looks actually really sick. Yeah, check out some videos, man. That there's some people who use it, and the shit that they make with it is amazing. But oh, now yeah. uh, the company just created a, a a modular synth, like a real no, that, synth. That's, that's the one I'm looking at more. So this modular one is this is fucking sick. Yeah, it's a Especially legit like 150 like, bucks, like which is super cheap. So they're they're trying to claim it as like the poor man synth. But it's teenage engineering, so you're going to get something that's really cool, that has a lot of support behind it, a huge community behind it, and uh, it's super nice. It's priced at $500. That's what I'm seeing here. $499. And I think uh, there are mod modules that are $150 each. I don't know which modules come with what. The 400 is an analog modular synth with with what teenage engineering says it's a warm natural analog sound priced at 500 comes with three oscillators a 16 step sequencer filter lfo two envelopes noise and random generators two vcas a mixer speaker and a power pack the 16 is a musical keyboard with a sequencer individual tuning option for 150 dollars you're also going to need i don't know if it's going to come with them but you're going to need like shit loads of wires so essentially what you do what you do with it is you set it up to the to the system and you plug in these modules, it plugs into this mainframe thing, and you just fuck around with it. You plug wires into certain things, into different envelopes, you tweak things, and it just creates insane sounds. And yeah. it's a whole world that I am not familiar with. I've Dude, was always no, interested is, in it, but this is insane. It reminds insane. me of uh, a lot of the cool stuff Korg was doing for a while. Yep, that's what it is. Yep, Like the chaos pads type stuff. Yep, it's a, basically a a cheap, nice looking Korg, like big Korg synth. It's really cool. Like, like even their, like even their little small Korg chaos pads. Those are a lot of fun. And this is kind of, this is giving me those vibes of like, 
you can but even more modular where you can just actually make it to what you want but like you have the ability of just making some really bizarre cool sounds yeah yeah i've always wanted to get into it but it's just so i have no idea i have no idea it, it's something you're gonna need to learn and if you know it already then you then you know if you'll want this or not but i i mean this might be something you can get into if you've been looking at it i know i want the op1 i've been dying to get one but there, there i think it's a thousand bucks for that thing it's expensive Roland drops new uh, stream deck competitor. So this is interesting. The VR1 HD is it combines multiple cameras and microphones for a pro style live broadcast. And uh, if you are a streamer or if you're a podcaster, this could be interesting to you. You can actually get one of those pocket operators for 90 bucks. Is it a module or for the, for the whole thing? It might be a module. Okay. The not the system base is five hundred or yeah, three fifty like, like or one hundred and fifty. So there's three sets, and then there's other like add-ons and things like that. Yeah, you probably need whatever whatever is the brain of oh, it. Th th no, there is a little tiny one for ninety bucks. Oh really? Yeah. <clears throat> That's cool. I mean, it's like a little calculator. Yeah, and they look really nice. I think it's a Japanese company, if I'm not mistaken. Check out the PO33, 35, and 32. Oh, there's even one for like 60 bucks. 50? Like they got some cool like calculator size synths. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. These little these little bad boys. This yeah, these sick. are meant these are like meant for these are meant for like like it's almost like a toy. Like a t little toy synth that you would connect to another synth to another Korg. Or something like that that has like a full pad on it, and then you can kind of just jam away on it. Yeah, Teenage yeah. Engineering makes awesome products. This is sick. Yeah. Okay, I'm gonna. Yeah, I'm definitely gonna have to check out more of this. Yeah, they make some cool shit. A lot. Like, if you look at the OP one and you look at some of the accessories that they have for it, like it's like there's like Lego sets for it where they automate, but they look like toys, and it's just really cool, cute little design. And I mean the sound. If you watch it, watch it on YouTube, the sounds that they produce is insane. All right, so Roland has a fifteen hundred dollar. I mean, it's essentially a stream deck, like a legit stream deck. If you want like a mixer, but you can also plug in cameras as well, which I think is pretty dope. So uh, kind of like TriCaster then almost. Yeah. Yep. <clears throat> so if you want to, if you have you know multiple cameras, if you are doing Twitch or if you're doing some sort some sort of just streaming where you have multiple cameras, this could be a good option because, you know, a lot of the other options are a lot more advanced and they're a lot more expensive. So for fifteen hundred bucks, that's not that's not bad at all. Even though the maximum output resolution is nineteen twenty by twelve hundred at sixty frames per second, so no four K output. Um, but that's okay. If you're streaming, you're mainly streaming at 1080 anyway. I don't know. Is anyone streaming at 4K these days? I can't. Im I can't imagine. Yeah, I think most people are still doing 1080 at yeah. most. I mean, uh, you would. I don't even know how much bandwidth that would. <laughs> I wouldn't. So that like would need anyway. At least if you're sure. I mean, I'm sure some Koreans are streaming 4K, but I don't think anyone else really has the reliable access to that kind of internet. Yeah. Yeah, the resources involved is a lot to stream 4K. But this stream yeah. 1080, which is just fine. And you got uh, tons of inputs. You can see here. You I also have, love uh, like, the, the top comment of like, it's too expensive. If you're going to spend $1,500, why aren't you going with a name brand of the industry? <laughs> like, and I just love that. Yeah, I love that every other comment's just like, who? You not know who Roland is? Elgato? <laughs> <laughs> they didn't mean like Elgato? <laughs> like, I mean, like, it was just like, yeah that's odd you're talking about sound equipment and you don't know who roland is <laughs> okay so there's two mic inputs which is which is cool too it looks like the way that they have it set up here there's literally a mic that that's connected to the top so you could talk right into it and i don't know i think and it's, it's kind full, of interesting it still looks like it's full phantom powered xlr yeah so you can you can hook whatever you want into that if yep. assuming it's set up right yeah which that would be sick if like like I would assume and hope that, you know, it, it's got a preamp in it that, you know, it can power a sure. 
Oh, for like, sure. You know what I mean? Like no as, long as, it, as long as you have that and then the rest of the controls it actually has. Yeah, no, this seems kind of cool actually. It should be enough to just power a sure, <laughs> a sure yeah. SM7B, just enough, which is all you need. I mean, Mike, there's, uh, this is the hardest thing to power, I think. So any mic should be good. And then you can plug in your cameras, like having, I mean, it's essentially a mixing board, but with camera inputs as well. So you can click on the fly, which is nice. Now, think, do you need it? Or you can nah. essentially use a stream deck and a DAC. And I'll put it this good. way. If you know who you are to need this, that that's, that's this kind of product. Like if you're Ninja, this is awesome. Like if you're if you're really high end type streamer, yeah. Or if you're like, doing like a show, <laughs> if you're doing some kind of show, like a legit show, yeah. And like, you don't like, have twenty cameras, you only have four, then but, this could be good. No, but I th I'm happy this exists. Oh, for because sure. Because this is this is that perfect. This is what the internet world kind of needs, where it's like, it is an accessible way to get really good production quality, so you don't have to go. I mean, like like Joe Rogan show, or I feel like you're a bigger podcast, like H three H three. You could buy this for in a second, yeah. or like not even maybe maybe not even that big, but like no, like something a little bit smaller than that. Yeah, like the step like, behind that. Yeah, but like that that's that's a great spot for like you have five hundred thousand YouTube subscribers to your podcast or something, whatever. Like this is perfect. Yeah. And I mean, it looks pretty cool there. It looks like there's a different, like you can have the background audio buttons, you have special effects, you have reverb buttons, you have, you know, uh, different camera placements. So you can press, like you can edit your scenes on the fly, which I think is cool. So you could split your, your cameras up on the fly. You can switch to different inputs. You have an on air button, which is the coolest thing ever. When you have like that flashing on air to let you know that you're live. That's awesome. All right, moving on. Netflix introduces share to Instagram feature. So you can share right to your Instagram stories, which I think is cool, man. I want to see more Instagram integration. I love Instagram. I'm a huge Instagram fan. More Instagram more Instagram for everything, dude. No, fuck. I hate fucking hate Facebook, but I love uh -huh. me some Instagram. <laughs> I love me some Instagram. But I want more integration because there's, there's just – the fact that they lock so much stuff off for verified users is the most frustrating thing. Like the fact that I can't post links is so frustrating because I'm not verified. I want more of like, let, let me, let me use it for business. Like you want me to, you know, I'll pay you money. Just let me do it. Stop locking shit off. Uh, YouTube TV is now nationwide, which I, I didn't realize it wasn't before. No, when it first launched, it was like 35 air city areas. Yeah. I didn't know that. It was pretty limited. Um, and it's a great service. It's one of the best TV services out there. Um, it doesn't have any Viacom stuff, but if you don't watch any of that stuff, then it's the best one out there. I mean, the, the on we still miss the on demand from YouTube TV. The one with Directv is so bad, even it's though it's still also, technically in beta. I think it's probably the best one that I've ever tried. If your main, like the main reason why you're getting it is sports, it's it's it was the best. Because it, it'll carry all of your sports and your local sports, yeah, and play them perfectly, which I didn't have the same experience with like Sling and Hulu. Yeah, yeah, and they did it just before Super Bowl, which makes sense. They want to get everyone to get this for Super Bowl. Like I said, the power in YouTube TV, in Sling, in Vu, in uh, Directv, the power is in. There's no contract. You can cancel whenever. That's there's so much power in that. When you're locked into a two year contract and they can rack fees up on you and they can rack service charges on you and there's nothing you can do about it. And if you break that contract, they charge you six hundred dollars. There's none of that with this with these services. So use them. That way we can do away with Comcast. No one wants Comcast anymore. We want this stuff. If you the more people subscribe to YouTube TV or to Direct TV or whatever TV service streaming Even service. Any of them. Any of them. Spec Spectrum, whatever it's called now. As long as you can get it like without Spectrum's locking into better. a contract, then I'm exactly. happy. Like even Spectrum, that's like as they do a bunch of really shitty stuff. But the thing that at, the only thing going for them is they don't run contracts anymore. It's beautiful. Beautiful. Hacked Nest Cam convinces family that the U.S. is being attacked by North Korea. This is fucking terrifying. 
So Nest claims that their systems weren't breached and that this lady must have had her password hacked and her uh, someone must have got into her account and was able to talk through her Nest Cam. So you have a Nest Cam and you can talk through it. So, uh, you know, if someone's in your house, you can be like, hey, get out of my house or something like that. Um, so what happened was this person did that and <laughs> basically scared the shit out of this poor woman and told her that the U.S. was under attack by North Korea. And it was probably a terrifying experience. And I do feel bad for her. But just make sure you're keeping your passwords protected. You know, you're not willy-nilly giving your passwords out to anyone. And uh, you can scare your dog with your Nest Cam. I do it all the time. It's great. There you go. Even though Nest Cam is so sketchy. It's expensive for what it is, too. <laughs> it's expensive, but it's so sketchy, man. Having a camera in your house, it's so sketchy. Ugh, it creeps me out, but we need it. We need it. Dude, there's also those little wise cams. That's what I swear by. Yeah. Uh, 25 bucks or 40 bucks. SD card overwrite and full 1080p with a good enough quality. Yeah, I might have to switch it out. Because really, I don't... It depends on how much you use it, too, I think, though. Well, I use it all day. It doesn't turn off. I, I don't mean that. I mean, like, the other features of the Nest versus just a more dumber security camera. Is what I, mean. I just want something that if someone breaks into my house, I see them. Yeah. That's all I want. I like how Nest has integration with the smartphone, and I like how it alerts you when things happen and there's motion stuff, but I'm sure Wise has that. Honestly, the doorbells started making a lot more sense to me, like Ring and stuff like that. The doorbells make more sense to me nowadays than like the Nest Cam. Yeah, we have a doorbell. We have uh, a Nest fire alarm and the Nest camera, and it all integrates together. But none of them are HomeKit, so it's a hassle to integrate all of them. in. Like You have five different apps open. Um, you're paying for it. You're paying for the Nest service, which is 20 bucks a month, I think, which is insane. Um, and you have a camera that sends out your video feed of your home to a third party, you know, to third party, whoever it is that's behind the Nest offices. I don't know if they see that footage. Probably not. It's probably encrypted in some way, but who knows? I don't know. So there's a lot of downsides (laughs) for sure. And I would love to have a local storage system where... I don't have to worry about that, so I might look into the whys. I only you know, need I crazy. only need it to be to to record up to like you know five days, if that. Yeah, I don't. That, uh, look into the whys. Yeah, it's a great little camera system for that. I've actually been looking into just making my own. Getting a, like, um, a yeah, you cheap, can like with Raspberry Pis and stuff. Yeah, like a cheap camera, and then just setting up through my Wi-Fi and downloading Honestly, it to a hard drive somewhere. That, but it, uh, dude, at that point, I just go with the whys. <laughs> I mean, it, you can get one for twenty bucks, which you're you're not gonna save that much more by just making your own. Yeah, I have to look look into it. I just don't. I, the only thing I just don't want any sort of company behind it, you know. So I don't okay. know. I haven't really That's seen fair. it, but we'll 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 see. Ya. I'll keep you guys updated on that. Apple promotes photography with shot on iPhone contest, but is ripping off photographers. So they're doing this uh, shot on iPhone thing, and one of the users on Reddit was saying, hey, this is kind of sketchy because if you take a picture and you tag it with their shot on iPhone tag and it gets entered into the competition, then you don't have any rights to that photo. And everyone's kind of making a big hubbub about it. But that's just how the, all of these things kind of go. Any kind of, Anytime you kind of do this stuff, that's kind of how it goes. So there's a lot of photographers who are upset about how why is an Apple kind of paying for these images? It's all free advertising. And I mean, it's, that's the, that's kind of the whole point. That's kind of why Apple did this contest is because it is free advertising. You know, you don't have to participate in it if you don't want to. I think it's kind of known once you, you know, send your photos over to Apple, they're kind of theirs. Actually, Kate's or my brother-in-law, um, he's a prof- uh, professional photographer and he had one of his images, uh, used by Apple recently, which is really cool. And they didn't pay him. <laughs> they just gave him a little shout out, which drastically increased his uh, exposure. But no, they didn't pay him. Actually, I don't think they paid him. Kate, did your brother get paid when he uh, when Apple posted his picture? Nope. Not surprised. No. And he's, he's the kind of photographer that... What, He's the kind of photographer that would absolutely love that money. 
Yeah, he is a starving artist. All right, Apple, last, Apple MacBook Pro owners cry foul. Six, whoa, dude, ZDNet, never again. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, I got that auto never again. Well, there you go, ZDNet. I'm never using a website ever again. ZDNet dude, is, is still around? Right? What the fuck? Right? I didn't even I know, realize you know, they that. Still, they, they're still around, and they do a shit ton for weird Linux crap. <laughs> really? Yeah. ZDNet, wow. I know, dude. Well, they just lost a customer. <laughs> um, so essentially <laughs> what happened was the screens were somehow there were, there, there's a flex a, a flex cable involved. I fix it posted this here. I'll go to I fix it website. There's a flex cable involved somewhere that attaches the the motherboard to the screen and once it starts to kind of uh have some fatigue or some wear on it, it produces like this stage light effect on your screen and it could be a simple $6 fix that you just replace that cable and you're good to go. But of course with, with it being an Apple product, there is none of that. You're going to have to have a genius repair it or have them personally repair it. And it's going to cost you $600 or whatever. I guess that's out of pocket, but if you have Apple care, it might, it might take care of it. But that's the thing with Apple, man. If you, if it breaks, if you don't have Apple care, you paying for it you paying for it and that's just what it is yeah and it's just fucking retarded that's just what it is man no it's it's fucking retarded <laughs> like <laughs> if it's a six dollar fix and you're actively making it so people can't fix it for six dollars it's fucking retarded that's what it is it's what it is. It's always been that way. If you break any Apple product, you're not fixing it. I don't care who. I don't care if you're Lewis Rossman himself. You're fucking paying out the ass. You can't even get these parts anywhere. Yeah, no, that that's why I can't really buy their laptops. They don't buy any other products. Yeah, they're all yeah. like that. Ever since the iPod, there's just that's how they do it. That's how there's. I don't. I want to know how much money they make on just repairs. Oh, fuck ton, I'm I sure. want to know. I want to know how much of the percentage of their value is in that. I never really had much of an issue with that stuff with, with Apple, with like hardware failures and stuff like that. I haven't either. Or, or software it, either, to be honest. I haven't either, but it's just, it, I don't know, it's one of those things that like but God never, forbid. never agrees with me where it's just like, no, if I own, if I buy this product, I fucking own it. Yeah, and I'm not. If it's a six dollar repair, I'm gonna f make it a six dollar repair. Well, let's see. Let's see. Let's read this issue. The issue is fairly simple. The next, the current generation MacBook laptops uses. If it's just a cable, I've replaced those before. It's pretty easy. Yeah, it uses flexible ribbon cables to connect display to display controller board beneath the touch bar. These cables wrap over the board, where they're secured by a pair of spring loaded covers, and they're subjected to stress of bending with every opening and closure of the laptop. Within a seemingly short time, those cables are starting to fatigue and tear. The backlight cable is generally the first to go, producing the infamous stage light symptoms and eventually giving out entirely when the laptop is open more than about 40 degrees. Um, when it oh, first wait, no. Oh, so the oh, no, this is even fucking worse. Holy shit. This is literally retarded. All right, what's going on? You have to explain. They designed it to be made into the screen, so you have to replace the screen if they break. Ah, uh, how does it design into the screen? I'm not sure, but that's what they're saying. They, the cables actually go into it as part of the display, so they cannot be replaced. Part of this was an This means if that when not if those cables start to fa fail, the entire display you need to be replaced, as opposed to one or two little cables effectively turning a six star problem problem into a six hundred dollar disaster. Oh Our good God, friend Lewis Rossman captured the problem on video. That's actually that. Wow. Wow. So I want to know That's why you wouldn't be able to replace the cables still. No, if you, if you like, if it depends on how they, if it builds into the screen, like you'd have to take the entire thing apart. I think. No, I want to, I would, I'd have to like watch the entire video. Is it like a, so like a solder job? Like, that's if you can't just replace the cable that is so fucking stupid like that is beyond stupid 
Yeah, that is odd. Now but, here, but Al- no, that is trying to get more money out of you by making a design flaw. I don't know if it would. Do you think it was intentional? I don't know if it was an intentional. I think it would be intentional to make a six dollar cable that's an obvious fail point have to be replaced like that. I would consider that intentional. Yes. Alex has started a a petition in which he kindly asked Apple to launch an extended warranty program addressed to the issue as soon as possible. The petition is currently hovering around 2,000 signatures. If you are affected by this issue, or if you, like us, have passionate feelings about repair, how a a long $7,000 laptop should last, let us know in the comments. Give Apple some feedback. So which... um, Yeah, it looks like it's like actually soldered into both the screen and the motherboard somehow. Yeah, I'm trying to find a pit, an image of it. Oh my god, that's like so beyond dumb. It's only the touch bar generation, okay. Which is my laptop. Yeah, there's no... Let's see if Louis, Louis Rossman has a close-up image of it. He usually is good at this stuff. Let's see here. Oh, there's the stage light effect. Oh, it's ugly. No, he doesn't. That's that's, that's kind of really dumb. Just Lewis Rossman just ranting and raving with his little white microphone. I hate that microphone that he uses. I know, but it's it's actually so terrible. I know, it sounds good. But it is really dumb. Like, I, yeah, no, I'm like, I sometimes I think he's got really good points. And sometimes he's just fucking ranting. He's good at getting views. He's good at tapping into yeah. that Apple hate market. Yeah, I'm, I don't. But I mean, I, I get from his viewpoint, like the same reason why I get why some people hate Windows, some people hate Mac. Like, he that that's his job. He fixes these. He fixes Apple products. You know, so of course he knows every reason why he hates them. Just like people who like work right. on Windows stuff knows every reason why they hate it. Right. Like stuff like that. Yeah. So that's why you you got to take it with a grain of salt. Definitely uh, go sign this p- petition. Apple's pretty good at being like, all right, we fucked up here. We'll cover it in your warranty. They've done it. They've done it for everything in the past. They have, yeah. So I'm sure they'll do it for this. It they seems should. like it's just a stupid. I mean, you would think. To, it would just be like an X, uh, what are they, an XT connector to just plug it in. But if it's soldered in some weird way where they have to replace the whole screen, I mean, if it's soldered, if it's soldered, I mean, you can essentially just replace it yourself. But if it's if it's embedded into the screen where you would break the screen if you were to to open it up, it's just a dumb design choice. That's the problem especially when you make for, these fucking products so fucking thin, well, no, man. It's that, but it's also like, especially like that's, that's, I guess that's why I'm frustrated, especially with this is it's the, it's the cables that has always been the fail point. Okay. I have had Apple products fail with fail on me before. It was always the fucking cable. It was always the cable inside. Like even b- back to my first iPod I ever had, it was that stupid little ribbon cable that broke. So you would have to replace the entire fucking iPod because of a ribbon cable yeah and like that's really frustrating to me of like that was almost 20 years ago yeah and at this point it's just neglect or intentional in my head no it's i think it's more neglect i mean look at the way these cables are and you can see it here in this image it's just like it i don't even know what kind of cable this is (laughs) it's not like a normal this is not a solder it's like an actual, I don't know. I've never seen a cable like this before. This is a ribbon cable, dude. Yeah, but it's not connected. And like, there's no like connection. It's kind of it is, just it's underneath that weird plastic wrap. So it's I... like soldered underneath that plastic wrap. The, that's just plastic over a ribbon cable. So how is it solder? Are there points on the cable? Like, is it one solder, or is it like the entire thing soldered in? I mean, at the connection points, it would be soldered because it's, I mean, it's still a cable. It's still just metal wire. That's what I'm wondering, though. Like, how that metal wire is connected. You know? 
Yeah. Is it just like a strip? Is it just like Probably. one sh- one giant strip? Probably. I don't know. I can't find good enough pictures. Yeah, there's only this one here. That's That's just dumb. It is dumb. <laughs> it's just fucking dumb. But you got to get Apple Care. If you get any MacBook, you have to get Apple Care. I don't care. I don't care what you say. It just it should come with the fucking it, they should build it into the price. Because it's dumb to not have it. Because these things always come up. These things always come up. You have to get Apple Care. If you're going to get Mac, know that you're going to have to buy Apple Care. Because there's no fix in their products. It's not like Windows. It's not and like, it's, you have, they, it's all fucked up inside. <laughs> it's like buying a BMW, you know? It's like buying a Rolls Royce where there's just no parts to, you can't just go get parts. It's not like a Civic. It's all weird shit. It's made weird. You got to get someone like Lewis Rossman to fix it. And pretty soon, unless laws go through, he won't be able to fix it because Apple's doing everything in their power to make it so no one but them can fix their stuff. Yeah. Under the fake guise of security. Thanks, T2 Chip. All right. That's it. Do you have anything else? I don't think that's it. I think that's it, right? Yeah. I didn't see anything else this week. I just... It, that... that uh... Apple could be the greatest company in the world. They do so much right. And then when they fuck it up, no, they're they like Canon. really know how to fuck it up, in my opinion. They're like Canon. Yeah. It's the same thing. Yeah. They're like Canon. Sony's like Windows. It's all it just it's all the same. Canon is like Apple is like PlayStation. You know? They do it on purpose. So you keep buying back and forth. You buy all I mean, they're all colluding with each other anyway. <laughs> They're just draining your pockets. There's never that perfect product. That'll never happen. They'll yeah. always, it's, they'll always keep you one step away. Well, it's sad, but there's, there's different levels. I think like I'm okay with not having a perfect product. I'm just more on the side of like, if I buy a device, it's my fucking property. I should be able to do with it what I want. Yep. Just don't break it. You're not no, gonna I should fix be allowed it. to break it if I want. Yo, you can. You just can't fix it. <laughs> you just so, can't fix it. Yeah. You can break it all it's you like want. One of those things where it's like, you know, dude, I, I don't. If I buy a car, I should be able to fix it, yeah. or I should be able to do what I want with it. It's like that with any other product, and it's always weird that it's like there's just a couple of markets where it's like this is dumb. Yeah, I, I my brain doesn't make sense of it. I will say the one thing about the audiophile industry is that. There are there you can fix anything in the audio file yeah. industry. It's great, and it's like if you if you can't if you can't your product will not sell. It just won't sell. People will not buy a product. That's one uh, industry that has salvation. But you're also spending yeah. you know two thousand dollars on a pair of headphones. Yeah, but that's where that price two, comes. If in. I'm gonna spend two thousand dollars, I would rather know I can fix it. Yeah, but um. We might have more weird graphics news in the next couple of weeks because there's a lot of rumors about that swirling, but we'll see. About what? The 10, the 1160 <laughs> that I saw? 1160, 1160 Ti. Yeah. All Is the 1160 Ti, uh, I think I saw this headline. Is the 1160 Ti better than a 1070 or something like that? Yeah. Well, God. we'll see. I really don't care, <laughs> to be honest. I mean, I do, but at the same not time, from it, Nvidia. I don't. not from NVIDIA. I mean, I guess if you're in the market I'm, for a I'm, GPU, want, you would I'm, be. I'm hoping for Navi because right now it's like I, I care because that, that market's always been really interesting to me. Like that market tells you a lot about how the rest of the market's going. Yeah. So that's why it's interesting to me. But like at the same time, it's like, I called it with the 2060 that the only person right now is going to kill NVIDIA is NVIDIA by releasing 18 other cards in this price range. Yeah. <laughs> yep. But I do commend them for releasing it, for doing that. Yeah. I do because they could have, they could go the Canon route and gimp their cards and then you, you know. Oh, no, they'll still do that. They still do that all the time. That's why there's 18 different cards and it gets con- really confusing for a consumer yeah but at least you can actually buy at least you can buy into the performance of your price bracket 
you know? Yeah. So if you have 200 as bucks, as you, you can get a, you can get a you, card that's worth 200 right bucks. One. Yeah. If, if you buy the right one, that's the hard part where it, it's not like Canon it, where it's like, if I get this $200 camera, I'm getting about $50 worth out of my money. And if sure. I want the next step up, then I have to spend $500. Yeah, no, that's true. Because the, the problem with the way Nvidia does it, especially on the low end is like a card will come out and we'll review it it'll be great and then they'll release three gimped versions of it for cheaper that people will still buy thinking it's the card that was reviewed hmm. like that happens a lot like where like yeah i mean even the 1060 there's still like weird five gigabyte versions of the 1060 in china like the 1030 came out and it's already a shitty card, but then there's a 1030 with DDR4 RAM for the same price or a little bit cheaper than unless you're like as invested in as a hobby into the world like I am, you're going to have no fucking idea this is a thing. And instead you're getting way worse out of it. Yeah, that's odd. All right, we'll catch you guys next week. Make sure you follow us on our website, nolife.digital, and our Instagram and Twitter at nolifedigital. Catch y'all later. Peace.